Hi everybody, I hope you are all well. It is an absolutely gorgeous Sunday morning here in the south of England. It's just, uh, we've got blue sky, but we've got mist. We've got, you know, hear the birds and everything. That It's not windy, it's not raining. It is just, it's a very peaceful Sunday morning. So I'm very glad that I'm here filming this video when we've got such nice weather. Um, because over the past couple of weeks while I've been away, we have not had that. We have had like ridiculous like constant rain and it has been you know and thunderstorms and such and it's just been you know a lot <laughs> of just constant dark clouds so to actually get blue sky and everything today it's absolutely glorious the weather is actually so much so that um it's really funny actually but i think it's funny um i haven't touched my garden for about a year i'm not a gardener just fyi but also because it was so ridiculously hot over the over last summer my garden just died it was just it didn't grow and then we had a really um well wettish but still quite dry autumn and then we had a really dry winter um so it was just like okay my garden just hasn't grown and then because of the past couple of weeks my garden has transformed into this very lush green mini jungle so yesterday i had i went out the front garden i dealt with all that started working out the back garden and then found i filled my garden waste bin so i haven't been able to properly tackle the mini jungle but i gotten i've gotten a a bulk of it done um so yeah and at least the front of the house looks presentable now and it's yeah the front of the house went absolutely wild as well so that's what you know i've had to deal with yesterday um but also over the past couple of weeks i have become a little mini obsessed with another show yes another one line of duty i right line of duty is a show where i have been told over and over and over again you have to watch this show and i'm like yeah i'll get to it, i'll get to it, get to it didn't get to it and because i'd had such great success with watching endeavor and such and um my and i was talking to my dad about it he started talking to me like line of duty again and he's like no seriously you have to watch this and my sister is now finished endeavor so all three of us were talking about endeavor and um i was there in a conversation when dad and my sister started talking about line of duty and they were both like right you have to start watching it today so i said okay i will i promise and i did and i love it so much so i have watched all six series twice in <laughs> across two weeks i'm just like oh my god how have i sat on this and not known that it you know it was there well i knew it was there but i was just like yeah i'll get to it i'll get to it and it's been well over what it's been 11 years now since the first series aired um and yeah i was just like yeah i'll get to it get to it and i just hadn't got to it in 11 years so <laughs> i've got there now i love it i adore all the cast um i especially love martin Compton. i don't know why he's there. steve he's one of these characters who's meant to be like really irritating but i really like him <laughs> um so yeah i was just like oh my god so now i'm exploring other dramas that he's done and also jed who writes it he's a phenomenal writer the show is incredible um he also um wrote a drama that was on i think two years ago now called vigil so i have downloaded that and i'm going to watch that today or at least start watching it today um so yeah let's see how i go with that one so i feel like you know my birthday being in june i tend to order myself some stuff as a birthday treat to myself and i have a feeling line of duty series one to six box set is going to be on the list of things to treat myself for my birthday um so yeah that's what i've been up to you know working getting obsessed with line of duty um <laughs> and reading which is what i'm here to talk about uh the book i have been reading is confusion by elizabeth jane howard the third of the five cazalette books so the last time um that i was here reviewing the second cazalette book a couple of weeks ago um i was saying about how it was you know the 
the war was kicking off and uh, everyone was starting to move about as it were it was like the, the the family were not not breaking apart but it was you know paths were being chosen some for the good of the nation some for the good of themselves and the children very much became it what the grandchildren should say because there's three generations of Cazalettes um that we who we follow the children very much became the focal point as they were now in like their their teens and such and it was the effect of the war on them and the book spanned I think it was two to three years um oh no two years that was it because this one is the one that goes yeah this one starts in March of 1942 and ends in May of 1945 so this one has got the the longer time frame but it's the shortest book um so yeah and once again the the third generation the grandchildren are our main focus um things have moved on a bit i'm trying to i'm trying to give a synopsis without spoiling because obviously this is a third of a fifth book and a, a five book series sorry and i i just I want to, I, I, I always feel very conscious when doing the reviews of a book series because I'm like, oh my god, how do I describe what's in this book if without giving away anything for the previous books in case people want to read them? So yeah, so I might be very vague, but I have to be. Um, so Louise, who is one of my favourite characters, um, she, in the last book, um, oh, I did actually talk about this in my review. So, ha, okay, I can say it. Um, she, she's going off to, to school. She's gonna, she wants to be an actress. That's her career path. She's going to be an actress. And um, she's got a great passion for the arts. And she always has, and she's very headstrong and um, very determined, a kind of character. Uh, given the events that had happened in the book with her parents, the previous two books, you can understand her want to need to find validation, I think that might be the right word, uh, from strangers, from an audience. Because, yeah, uh, I'm not going to say why, but yeah. Um, but yeah, things in her parents' marriage are not great. And this book kind of, I get, well, in a way, I kind of, Confusion is a very interesting title. And at times I kind of felt a bit confused because like Louise all of a sudden goes, no, I want this thing instead. Like she has been so headstrong about being an actress and doing, and you know, arts and her passion and everything throughout the first two books. And in this one, she kind of goes, nah, I want to do this thing. It's, it, it, it was, and what that is, again, because of that thing that we sometimes follow patterns that we learn from childhood. I get why she chooses what she chooses but at the same time I'm like oh honey I really I really love her passion for for um art and drama and such and her finding her own path especially after what she has been through with her parents in the first two books so if I had to just lose that that confused me a bit and uh, as mentioned previously in the other other um review videos i got into the Cazalettes because of the bbc radio series and to be honest even when i listened to the bbc radio series i was confused by her change of of um path and i hoped that the books would make it a bit more clearer and to be honest the book didn't really because even though i you know it is that thing that a character can go off and do whatever they want you know how sometimes where you you have someone in your life who like say has vowed oh i'm never going to get married never going to have kids whatever and then all of a sudden they just turn up one day with this person that you have never met before and going we're getting married and you're like 
uh, what the hell? It's just, you know, something, something like that that just completely throws you. I, I kind of felt like that with Louise and where she goes in this book. And then the consequences of her decision are so interesting. Um, and that realisation of the patterns from child from our childhood, what we learn in childhood, affecting your adulthood. Her realisation of that is, yeah, I really liked that. Um, we're still carrying on, as I said, focusing on the, the grandchildren, Louise, Polly and Clary are our key three. I forgot to say that just as in the previous book. But we are getting more of the other uh, grandchildren as well as they are growing up. Um, so let's talk about Polly and Clary, right? Polly and Clary have got this, uh, they're a bit, I, I, I feel a bit odd about them in this book. Now, that, that sounds very strange, I know, because I really do like them. But at the same time, like, Clary especially just annoyed the hell out of me in this book because <laughs> it's like she's I, I know she's been judgmental since she was little but sometimes it's like oh for the love of god just stop it just sometimes I want to slap her across the face because she just irked me irked me so much um yeah she just she she gets like really angry about okay I kind of have to reveal a little tiny thing, spoiler from the previous book, but it's so minimal, it shouldn't make a difference. Okay, so in the previous book, um, her little sister, Juliet, is born. Okay, that's the whole spoiler right there. Um, so Juliet um, is what she's like, like one year old uh, at the point at the beginning of the book. And like she gets really frustrated with Juliet because... Uh, She's the one who's having to look after her while Zoe is off, you know, trying to provide food, put food on the table for the family. She's like, this is not my baby. I shouldn't be doing it. Yada, yada, yada. And then, and like judging Zoe for trying to feed her family. And I'm like, shut up. Stop it. I'm sorry. No, no. I get that you're a teenager. I get that you don't understand how the world, wor world works and there's a war going on and shit is happening. I get that. But you have got to stop being a baby because bloody hell, woman. I just, oh God, she irritates me sometimes. Um, and even like with Polly, her really, I've always had issue with her relationship with Polly, her cousin. I mean, they, they, I mean, it's good to have, you know, friendship with your relatives. Fine. Yeah, good. All for it. But Kyrie judges Polly to her face all the time. And it's like, so, again, a slight mini spoiler, but I'm not revealing why or, uh, you know, everything. Um, at the end of the second book and into the third book, Polly is in mourning. Won't tell you who or anything but she's in mourning okay and there's this whole section at the beginning of the book of Polly going through clothes to um you know give away or to keep you know figuring out what she wants in that and Clary is just like going through stuff and I like judging Polly for the choices that she makes it's like it's her freaking choice just sometimes Clary just pissed me off pissed me off so much um during it and especially because I know where she's going to go and everything it just kind of feels a bit check yourself in the mirror honey you know just she's not she thinks that she is the best person possible, that she's, she, she views herself as righteous to me, you know, it's, she thinks that she is, she is the one that everyone should admire, but no one pays attention to her, and the reason why no one pays attention to her is because she's a pain in the ass. just, mm. Her way has got to be the right way. 
so she will judge people for the ways that they go in the world and it's just like clary i'm done i'm done babes i'm done i know that you're you're in your like late teens and you're gonna make mistakes that you're gonna learn from no problem whatsoever in 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 acknowledging that but grow the fuck up given what you went through in the early in the second book and stuff that you learn about what was going on overseas grow up so that was my advice for clary <laughs> polly i i i admired her strength through this book i will i will say that as i said you know she's in mourning um she doesn't quite know where she's going but also i think polly struggles with um the life in which she was born into and that's not saying that she you know she has issue with the fact that she was raised in a wealthy family and you know uh, we should be doing more for this that and the other and such i think it's that thing that she because it's all that she's known she wants to break away from that and explore other things like polly could very very easily live away from you know the life that she has been brought up very comfortably as long as she knows that there is pure love in her home the i think it's that thing yeah because of the 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 relationships that the parents had greatly impact the the children and especially louise polly and and clary and such and what they go on to do and polly views love as more important than money and other children might say otherwise might say the polar opposite um the, is it better to have security of love with the insecurity of money or vice versa so those questions that they're starting to ask in their late teens and early 20s because uh, louise is a few years older than clary and, Pol and polly just say so where um i i find i find really interesting um and even like the mature like i said you know as i was just i was just saying about clary and she needs to grow up and such and develop a maturity um it's very interesting because as as mentioned previously in the first book zoe who is clary's stepmother she is you know this bright young thing who very much is spoiled brat and she she's not very fond of the children and such and she she just sees the world as this glamorous thing and then as soon as her world is shook by the war and changes in her marriage and such she matures very very quickly and i'm not going to say why but you could say an event that happens in the first book separate from the war also has a major factor in that which i totally um agree with and acknowledge um but i think that's the thing because she's away from the family when that happens her returning to the family is what gives her stability back and then that is what is shook by the war and things fragmenting and, and such so the cazalets become her foundation and then when that is blown apart she she could either crumble or she can take control and see things in a completely different angle as a mature woman and she chose she chooses that path and i admire her for that i really do and i just wish that clary would follow suit um but as i said knowing where she clary is going to go uh, as i said you know clary she's just going to annoy me for the next two books because she's the character who annoys me um I think Carrie will eventually get there, but her choices in the next book, I'm a bit like, 
Okay. Clearly you made that choice because of your daddy issues. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Clearly she did. Clearly she did. But that's for the next time. So, um, when it comes to actually reading this book, I did like the fact, especially because of the lives of the um, the grandchildren uh, of, the, you know, the uh, youngest generation of the Cazalet family are still in main focus. We met um, a whole load of new people in this book uh, who they encounter, you know, have various interactions with. And so that was really good to get new characters' perspectives. And also, can I give a shout out to the fact that when war happens, the servants who we have followed through these books who serve the Cazalette families as well, they aren't um, pushed down. They're not pushed out. We still know stuff about them, but they haven't gone to, oh, I'm I'm just an ordinary person, so I'm going to take an ordinary person's job and, you know, do my bit for the nation. No, some of them, have, you know, they've gone off and they've done, like, really valiant things. And so just because they are of a certain lower, lower status um, when they're with the Cazalettes in this bubble um, uh, of pre-war life for the wealthy in England, that doesn't mean they are stuck in that position outside of that bubble. So I really, really loved that. I thought that, yeah, that was that was a really strong thing to show. Um, your status in wealth did, doesn't necessarily mean that you are downgraded for, um, uh, you know, various supports and positions during the war. You can be, you can go off and do what you want to do, um, and yeah, I th I really respected Elizabeth for showing that. Um, I really I I I did feel I didn't know if it was because I was just so annoyed with Clary, you know, and various things that that happened in this book. I don't know if that put a negative feel for me on my reading of this book or if I felt negatively about the writing um but it just kind of feels like this is the book where it feels a bit like it's a it's a well not meh but you know it's just there there's nothing that really stands out as a key moment like how in the previous book I talked about how the opening with suddenly this this bomb raid that that happens that the Cazalets have uh, witnessed and uh, their eyes are open. It's like, this is now reality. Your bubble has been exploded. You know, things like that that stood out in the first and the second book. I didn't really have that feeling with this book. I suppose you could say Kari being so judgmental and just really irritating me was what stood out. Um, <laughs> but, but again, that, as I said, is that, I don't want to say poor writing, or is that just because this is the middle of a five book series? So you've got to have that bit of a lag in order to establish, you know, okay, we've got new characters, we've got new ground, we've got this new form of stability for these characters. Um, so you're going to have a book that's not, it's neither here nor there, but you have to have that stability in order to then build up for the next two books. And one thing to be aware of, I don't know if I mentioned this, originally this was published as four books and then the fifth one got brought out like 10 odd years later. So if, if you think about it, how this was originally written as a third of four books, again, you can understand why the, the, three quarter point might be the the um less oh, I don't want to say interesting book but you know less impactful book let's put it that way um so yeah this is this is the point where maturity and adulthood and such really starts to play in for Clary Polly and Louise and and the and the other kids who are who are growing up as well through this really turbulent time, um, it's yeah it's the establishment of a new foundation. So it's not a 
bad read, but I was irritated, mainly because of Clary, and it just, it didn't, it didn't quite sit the way that I wanted it to sit. But I will say that I think it is still a strong book. Um, yeah, it's just a bit fit in the middle, <laughs> you know. Um, I still really like the way in which um, she keeps pace with the various generations and just so you're aware um, the structure of this is just like the previous one where you have like multiple parts and then within each part you have like a section for the family then Louise then Polly then Clary or a reordering of those four but that's how it is so you'll spend lots of times with just Louise or just Polly or just Clary and then you'll have a section for the family where we're catching up with everybody else so you know so the with the family set um part sections of each part sorry <laughs> get my words right um can be a little um well not manic but you, you've got a lot of things going on and then it'll just suddenly slow because we're focusing on the one character um but yeah i, I maybe if that balance was slightly better or you know we didn't the sections for louise polly and and um and clary weren't as long that could that could make the family sections a bit longer in order to and get that kind of manic feeling a little a little more balanced but that's just my own personal opinion um so yeah overall it it wasn't a bad book but it just kind of felt like it was just sat in the middle and didn't know exactly um what it was but i completely acknowledge that this is because this is to the end of the war it's like right now post-war how do you go back to life that you had before when everything that has happened so this is the new foundation layer this it kind of it kind of does you know make me think i know it's completely different utterly different but it's from personal experience kind of like the when the pandemic hit you had your pre-pandemic life where we didn't have to worry about anything and the pandemic happened and people got into a new routine and new habits and and such and then post pandemic um and just to make it absolutely clear i totally acknowledge that obviously <laughs> um covid is still around and everything and it's still a you know a health issue but i'm saying post pandemic now because of the downgrading that that got announced the other week about everything um but even even in like the past year or so since lockdowns ended uh and such there are people who have got new routines they they realize things about their life do i need to spend all this money on this that and the other um do i do i really find satisfaction in that when this new thing that i've gone down because through lockdowns and a pandemic, I've suddenly found a passion for. I'd want to explore that. Am I really happy with my my job and, and everything? And paths change, life shifts and such. And so, yeah, that kind of the establishment of a new foundation has been witnessed um, in this pandemic. So, you know, things like that. It's just, yeah. So I get why this middle book is written the way it is. It's not as adventurous, you could argue, as it were, as as the previous one, as I said, you know, bomb raids and all that lot. But it's still an important book and for the family. And now going forward, it will be interesting to see how Elizabeth writes the next stage for each family member. Okay, so those are my thoughts on the third Cazalette book, Confusion. As I said, you know, I really, really like the BBC radio drama, The Cazalettes, which I will include a link to um, for Audible uh, in the description. And uh, yeah, I, this is what got me onto the story of The Cazalettes. I just came across it randomly and I started listening to it and I really liked it. So yeah, I definitely recommend the BBC radio drama, The Cazalettes. Uh, and then, yeah, it's on to the next book. So let's ask my usual questions. Would I read this again? Yes, I would. Um, but I would read it because, as I said, it's a bit of a middle book. I would have to read it 
as I reread the Cazalette collection, not just randomly pick it up off my shelf and read it. Um, would I recommend this to anyone? Yes, I would, just as as I would the, the previous two books. Um, yeah, I think they're, they're well written. Um, would I read any more Elizabeth Jane Howard's books? Yes, I think I would. Yeah, I, I would like to explore um, other books that she has written outside of the Cazalettes, of course. I don't actually know her, her, her bibliography, so I have to look into that. Um, but yes, and a shout out again to the designer of these covers, this gorgeous cover. And I love the fact that it starts off very light and kind of spring flowers and then as the series has gone on as the war has deepened they've gotten darker and darker and oh it's just gorgeous um so yeah so those are my thoughts on confusion by elizabeth jane howard have you read this book i'd love to know what you think leave me a comment comment box below give me a thumbs up thumbs down and turn to get each side and i'll my thoughts of the next kazalette book which is casting off now let's have a look at the um the chapter list okay so we're starting off in July of 1945 and end in January of 1947. Oh, but this is new. Okay. So, you know, previously I said how you would have multiple parts and each part would have like Clary, Polly, Louise and the family. We have the multiple parts again, but this time the parts are split up into the brothers, the girls, the wives, the outsiders, then part two is completely dedicated to Archie. Then part three, we've got Edward, Rupert, Polly and the wives. So she's bringing all the generations back together again. That is very interesting. Oh, I'm quite excited for this now. I'm really quite excited for this now. Okay, so we've basically spent what two three about five years where we've mainly been following louise polly and clary and now we're going back to getting all of the parents all of all of the grandkids uh, 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 as it were uh, parents kids i say grandkids because i keep thinking of the three tier the three generations but yeah um so yeah the the second and third generation of the castle fact we're getting them individually and we've got archie entirely for the for the second set oh there's a part four sorry i didn't realize there was a part four over the page um so we've got louise clary the outsiders and archie again ah oh and we have got an updated family tree oh very nice oh i'm liking this Ooh. right then that's exciting stuff. Um, so yeah, was, I will let you know my thoughts on um, the next book. Lovely cover again, casting off. It's now going back to lighter colours post-war um, as soon as I'm done reading. <laughs> All right, guys. Bye.